Hid Toolbox version 0.52 has just been released and I thought it would be a good time to give a detailed rundown about what's new. When you first open version 5.2 things are going to look a little different than what you're used to. So the first thing we're going to talk about is this table. What is this? When you first run version 5.2 the table is going to look something like this. What you'll notice here is several what looks like directories, right? And these are going to be the directories that are being used by PID Toolbox. So this is your root directory, which is where PID Toolbox first opens. This will be your main directory, which is essentially the location where you have the PID Toolbox program main folder. And in that is where you find the application. And the last is a directory where you have your log files. So this will keep track of where things are. So anytime you open a different log file, for example, it'll show you that. So let's just leave that for a minute. Now the other thing this table is going to do is it will display all of your current settings. And by settings, I mean which, which of these things you have highlighted, uh, how you have things set up. So PID Toolbox version 5.2 now records whatever your settings are, and you can save those settings using this Save Settings button. But as I said, the first time you open it, it's going to be blank like this. So let's just open a log file. We're going to navigate to where our log files are. We'll just grab a few. So if we just hit Save Settings, this now gets populated with all of our default settings. Now what does all this mean? I'll just run down through a few of these and you'll get the idea. So basically log viewer single panel zero means that this option, this checkbox is selected off. So zero just means off. Log viewer plot R, plot roll, this means it's selected on because it's a one here. And so plot pitch is a one, plot yaw is a one that's on. Then you have here log viewer line smooth one, one just means the first in this list of entries, so this means smoothing is off, and so on. And then you have other parameters like spec 2D, so that's your, your basic power spectral density line plots. Down further we have settings associated with your frequency by throttle tool, and then the frequency by time tool, and then the step response tool. Right at the bottom are your directories. Now notice something. Your log file directory is now filled and it shows the most recent location where we just grabbed the log file. So that was in this location. So if I go and grab another log file and I pick a different location, just grab a few log files. And then if I hit save settings again and then slide down, you'll notice that the log file directory is now changed to that. So what this is doing is basically recording your most recent log file directory so that when you open PID Toolbox again, it'll remember that directory. And when you, when you select a new log file, it'll initially will go to your most recent directory. Now, if I want to change settings, suppose I want to use for example, I want to turn yaw and pitch off. Then we can save those settings, and then you'll see that it's, it's changed accordingly. So the next time I open PID Toolbox and run it, it's going to run with this as the default. Okay? So the same is true across the various tools. So if I go to the main folder, you'll notice that now there is a file called Log File Directory and PTB Defaults. This is where it stores all this information. So if you open up the PTB defaults, you'll notice that it contains all of the data that you see over here, okay? And in the log file directory, this is the most recent log file directory that we used. So that's going to be the same in the Mac and the Windows version. But there's, there's a little caveat for the Mac version that you're going to need to know. In the Windows version, when you first open the program, you'll notice that the root directory always goes to the same location as the main directory, which is where the PID Toolbox program exists. Right? So when you download the program for the first time, you'll see this main folder, and that's where I always recommend running it. 
so technically it's not the root directory in Windows. But I call it the root directory because in a Mac, when you first open the program, it always takes you really to the actual root directory of your of your drive. But we don't want this because then PID Toolbox is not going to be able to open your saved defaults because it's not going to know where they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little file to redirect PID Toolbox to the proper location. So included with the Mac version only will be this main directory.txt file. And you're going to place that wherever this entry called root directory takes you. So in, in my case, it's the root directory, and I think that it should be in most Macs, it probably will take you to the root directory, but just confirm that. That's where you're going to place this file, main dir.txt. So in my case, it's right at the root directory of my Mac HD, and in that, I'm going to put the path, the directory, to the main folder where my program exists. Okay? That's the only thing you have to do in Mac. So you're just going to you're going to take this file, put it at your root directory, and you're going to write in it the location of this directory. So users Brian White sl forward slash desktop PDB. That's mine. You're going to put in that wherever you have your main program. So you're ready to go. That's all you need to do. And again, that's only the Mac version. So you don't have to worry about any any of this for the Windows version. Now let's talk about the other features. So there are a few changes here to the main log viewer panel. Let's start here. So you'll notice now we have a slider at the top. If you just grab the slider and move it along, you'll see that it drags this line with it across at any point in time. And at the same time, you'll notice that you have a miniature display of the sticks. So over here is throttled by yaw, hitch, and roll. If I just hold down the arrow here, you can see it move along and it's plotting time at the top in seconds and the position of the sticks at any at, any, at each of those moments in time. Now below that you'll see that we have the motor output in percent and we have them organized now according to the motor organization in Betaflight. So motor 1 is back right, motor 2 is front right, motor 3 is back left, motor 4 is front left. And below that we have the rotation rate of the roll, pitch and yaw axis. All right, another big change is we've replaced the, the zoom function where you would previously click in the white space, and we've replaced that with now this single panel checkbox option. And so what this does is it opens everything in a single panel. Roll is in solid, pitch will be dashed, and yaw will be dotted. The rationale behind this was the zoom, the zoom function didn't allow me to plot these on top of one another, and it was a bit slower. Another thing that's changed from previously is we used to have a milliseconds to hertz button. That is actually now placed down here and it's simply called period. So if you click this you'll get that same functionality. So you just click any point in space and then click again and you'll get that distance in time in, in milliseconds and in hertz. This is also now solid red bars so it's easier to see that difference. Again to come out of that you can just reselect any of the files. Another thing that's worth mentioning here is if you click on setup info you'll notice you have certain rows that are highlighted red. And basically these rows are the rows in which the file on the left and the file on the right differ. So this just makes it a lot easier to find the differences in settings between two files. There's also a little button up here called show differences only and what that does is it just highlights the parameters that are different and clears all the rest. So this is a pretty useful function. Another thing that's new here, we now have this thing called end colors. So basically this is setting the number of colors that will be used for the subsequent plots. Don't get it confused with these colors. The colors for these parameters are fixed, but this setting sets a number of colors running systematically from hot to cold. So in other words, we have a color space that runs from say dark brown to blue and then we divide it up into the number of colors that we're, that we're interested in. And the more we divide it, the closer each of the colors are to one another. So you'll find it harder to differentiate one color from the next if this is too high. By default, I forced the allowable range to be between 1 and 20. So if you set it at 1, every color will be the same brown color. So an ideal way to set this, really, is based on the number of files that you want to compare. So if, for example, I wanted to compare five different files, in a step response test, then by setting this to five, the colors will be maximally different. So let's just take a look at that. 
you'll see the colors range from brown, then to orange, to greenish, light blue, to a darker blue. If instead I had chose 10 here, which was the previous default, then the colors will range from brown to red to an orange to a sort of yellow to a green. So each step in that color space is smaller. Now let's take a look at the changes in here. In the spectral analyzer, we've got a few new changes. The main difference here now is we also have the option to plot in a single panel, which works pretty much like it does in the first panel. But let's just go ahead and plot these lines. You'll notice now that we have plotted up here gyro filter, D-term filter. These are the filter delays that are estimated in PID toolbox. So these were previously plotted in the frequency by throttle tool. But I decided that this is a more appropriate place to put them, and you can also then list them according to each of the files that you're looking at. What's neat about this is we've got an option down here now. So, this, so right currently it's plotting filter delay, but we could also plot the set point to gyro delay. What it is is the cross correlation lag that's computed between the input red and the output black. So by all accounts, it is how close in time the gyro, the copter, is responding relative to the input, the set point. And you'll really see this when you start analyzing, for example, the effect of feed forward. Now, the last thing in this list is set point smoothing delay. You might be wondering what that is. Let's just go ahead and click that. So what you'll notice is that in, unless you have the proper debug mode set, you're gonna get this error message, debug mode not set. So in order to look at the set point smoothing delay, you have to have the proper debug mode set. Previ in previous versions, this used to be called pre-filter gyro, but I've decided to call it debug because that's essentially what it is. It's plotting the debug variable. So in this case, for example, I've got the pre-filtered set point in there. So if I click the debug variable, you'll see all these, this really jagged stair step thing going in. So this is essentially set point unsmoothed. It essentially looks like your RC signal, which it is, but it's converted to degrees per second. What I did was a series of tests where I varied the smoothing. So the debug variable that you need to have this set to this is either RC interpolation or feed forward. Both of these will currently put the unfiltered set point into the debug variable, and you'll be able to see that here. Now I did a series of tests on the bench with the props off, and you can see that I had different levels of smoothing. So here I had the RC filter cutoff set to 5 hertz. And then the next one's 10 hertz, 15 hertz, 20, 30, 40, 50, 75, and 100 hertz. So you can see as we raise the cutoff, the red line, which is the smooth set point, gets closer to the gray. See that? So now if we go into the spectral analyzer, Maybe you want to plot set point here in terms of the spectrogram. And if I click set point smoothing delay, now it plots the delay between the first and the second curve. And so you can see at 5 hertz RC smoothing cutoff, getting around 30 milliseconds down to 23 at 10, 16 milliseconds at 15, it's 20 hertz, 30 hertz, 40 hertz. 50, 75, and 100 hertz. This is interesting, right? And so it even, it also shows you that as your cutoff is higher, you're getting more energy at higher frequencies from the RC going into the, into the system. And especially around here at this 150 hertz point, because we're using crossfire 150 hertz, right? If this was 50 hertz, you'd get a sort of a little bit of a hump like this right about here. So it's something to keep in mind, because if you really want really smoothed HD footage, you know, these really low RC smoothing cutoffs can really bring down all this energy up here and can really help smooth out your footage. But this is not this is something new now that PID Toolbox is able to plot and you can look at this if you have the right debug mode set. Okay, so that's those changes. Now if we go into the frequency by throttle, now we can set these columns how we like them. So suppose I wanted to plot here I wanted this to be the PID sum, say. Then I could just set those things, save settings. Now I go back out, and now when I hit the frequency by throttle, it holds that in memory. So that'll always be the way it comes up until I hit save settings again, okay? Same here for if I wanted a different default color map. Suppose I like jet better. Then I could just hit save settings, come back out, 
and you'll see that jet is the default now. Okay? Then we have this new frequency by time tool. You'll notice various settings here, but let's just go ahead and run a log file. So what you're looking at now is frequency on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So this is really useful because you can really see the different motor bands across a file. And this is going to be very useful when, for example, if you don't have a full throttle sweep, you can still see where the motor bands are, what the dominant motor bands are. You can see this first motor band is located here. The throttle goes up, comes down. There's the, there's the first motor band. But you can also see that occasionally this splits apart. You see that? So what's happening here is when one motor or one or another motor speeds up higher than another one, these will sort of start to split like that. So that's your first harmonic, okay? Now the second harmonic is usually double that. So we're at about, say, 150 hertz here. So this is around 300, okay? There's your second harmonic. So you can see that it doesn't come in very strong at certain points and at other points it comes in and in depending on what you're doing it's a little stronger than other times right so there's your second and then there's a third harmonic here so again you know the third harmonic is very weak at high throttles you can see that but then at certain throttle points it's pretty strong so this can be really useful for analyzing the effectiveness of your rpm filtering or your any of your notch filters for that matter so if I look at then the filter gyro, I can see how well that's doing. Just hit run. Now I can see that there's still a little bit of residual there, but it's doing quite well, right? You see this little band down here. Now this is the, a characteristic oscillation that you want to watch out for, but you see sometimes what's really nice is you can see this very nicely in, the, in these frequency by time plots, sometimes that don't show up really well otherwise. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice way to analyze data. Sometimes you can't tell whether you have one, two, or three harmonics if you hadn't done, say, a full throttle ramp. But in here, it's quite easy to see it. So in the step response tool, we have a few different features. So again, here, we also have this, the, the ability to plot a single panel. So this gets really useful. So if I plot these PD balance tests, all this looks familiar, right? And if we want, we can again, we can plot this as a single panel. So this can be a bit cumbersome when you're looking at too many lines, but suppose I just look at the single one. So now it compares the axis on one plot. This is really useful if you want to try to begin to match responsiveness across the three axes. In Betaflight 4.3, we now have a slider that allows you to, to set the pitch to roll balance. And most people don't even really think much about this, but if you have a freestyle frame, for example, you're going to need higher PID gains on pitch than on roll in order to match the responsiveness. And so by plotting them on top of one another, we can then match the pitch to roll based on latency and overshoot. And if these match, then we know that we have the same responsiveness on both axes. Now the last thing I wanted to say is PID Toolbox now loads log files much faster than it did previously. So there's a little bit of work underneath as well. Um, so previously if I loaded a fairly big log file it would really take a long time. There you go. So that's PID Toolbox version 0.52 in a nutshell. And uh, go ahead and grab a copy of that and let me know what you think. <laughs>